Hello, and welcome back to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and welcome back to the Corralling Clefts category. It has been a long time since I've done this. In fact, I believe the first two videos were done almost two years ago, so I had to uh, go back and do some uh, studying up on this one. But today we're talking about the version 27 update and what the Smoofle fonts brings to us for Clefts, which is uh, kind of neat in a few ways, so let me just show you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my document options here under clefts and I'm going to go to the cleft designer. Now, as far as the number of clefts that we have access to within a single file, that has not changed in 27. So you have 18 clefts that you can choose from. This is the same, um, even though there are tons more clefts that you can use within these clefts, we can only ever define 18 of them. So. Uh, you're kind of limited in that regard. But let's take a look at what's actually in the Smeeful specs. So if we go, let's just ch choose the treble clef here and press select. It will take us to the clefts category in the symbol selection dialog box. And already you can see that we have a whole bunch of different treble clefts to choose from, including the double octave and the octave uh, treble clefts. And we have the old school uh, octave treble clef here with a double uh, G clef. Um, there's some other things. This is a G, C combining clef here, which you can use for uh, an octave treble clef as well. Um, there's some other funky stuff. You got some different options for C clefs with arrows and everything. Uh, there are some old school C clefs, 19th century C clefs. This is a combining part of a C clef. It's like this piece of this G clef. Uh, Finale doesn't really have a native way to use this. Uh, in other programs they might, but so this one isn't necessarily useful in Finale. Uh, we have several different types of F clefs with uh, octaves and arrows and everything. Here's your unpitched percussion and your uh, unpitched percussion clef two. There is a semi-pitched percussion clef, which I had never heard of before, but that's one of them. And this is the other one. Uh, there are tab clefs in the uh, the uh, Finale Maestro font, and there's these special Schaefer clefs. If you know what those are, you can use those. And then you get some funky things like some backwards clefts, some upside down clefts. So you could do some really nifty things with these, uh, including some like, you know, those Bach desk pieces where you have the line going one way. And if you read it upside down, it goes the other way. So we can do some uh, fun stuff with that. We also have this bridge clef, the diatonic accordion clef. Incidentally, I'm finding this information here in the upper left hand corner. You could always see what these things are. Now these are reduced clefts uh, or clefts with uh, reduced sizes. We don't really need to use these in Finale because Finale will just reduce the sizes for us. Um, so in Finale, these aren't necessarily uh, useful. And then in the alternates and extras, we have a whole bunch of them. So we have these fancy uh, F clefts, the French clefts. Uh, here's another F clef, uh, 19th century. There's a, a couple fancy C clefts. What is that? French 18th century. This is a different type of unpitched percussion clef. There's a few different tab clefts, some with serifs, some with non-serifs. Um, and then if we scroll down, there's a bunch more. Uh, let's see, uh, we have these guys here with all the numbers above and below. I'm not 100% sure what these are. I've never seen these used, but I believe these are sort of transposing clefts. So this is a G clef, and then you transpose the notes up a step, I guess. Um, I guess that's how that works. And then there's like flats, you know, the 10th flat or minor 10th or whatever this means. Not 100% sure how these work, but um, they're there for you, and there's a lot of them. Uh, and I believe that's all in this category. Yep, and then in the Medieval and Renaissance section, there's a whole bunch of different categories here. This I believe the second one down is clefs. Yep, and so you'll get a bunch of different uh, chant clefs that you can use as well. So there's a couple G clefs. Uh, that's an F clef. That's another F clef. Uh, a couple different types of C clefs. A bunch of different types of C clefs that you can use uh, for your chant notation. So yeah, there's a lot of different types of clefs that we can use, and uh, you know this is all brought to us by the Smeeful font. So it's it's kind of neat. Um, so let's just say we want to choose this funky clef with the arrow, G clef up arrow, and now we've just redefined that first G clef to be that, and you can see that in your score. All right. I do kind of like the uh, the old school F clef, so if you want to check that out, let's choose this one and go up to alternates and just check this this uh, F clef from the French 18th century, just to see what that looks like. And uh, yeah, so you see something like that. So a bunch of different options for you uh, as far as choosing clefs. 
Now, one thing that's interesting is that the tab clefts, the last two clefts here, the, the way this is done in Finale Pre-27 is that it used a shape. And you can see that when I choose the tab clefts over here, it chooses the shape as opposed to the character uh, that all the other ones are. Um, interestingly, it, you don't need to have these as shapes anymore, but Finale still selects these shapes and they're still available to us if we want to use them. We can convert these to the characters if we want. There's not a ton of advantage there, except that there is a, a couple different types of tab clefts if you want to use them. So. Uh, for this first one, you can just select that and choose character, and then go in here and choose clef, and uh, choose the tab. Actually, you know what? Let's go into the alternates and extras here, because there's a bunch of different tab clefs here. Uh, we can choose the six-string tab clef tall for this one and press select. And you'll notice that uh, it doesn't get put centered on the staff. And actually, the reference staff here is a five-line staff anyway, so it doesn't totally make sense anyway. But in order to make this tab clef work, I do know that you have to change this clef position to be negative five steps, not zero. And that should work for the uh, six staff, uh, six-line staff, which I have down here for the guitar. And you'll see my bass guitar is using that same uh, clef, but we can do something different here. Let's go and change this one to a character and again we'll go to alternates and extras and we'll choose uh, the small four string tab clef and select and for this one we need a clef position of negative three to get it where it's supposed to be and of course this uh, instrument doesn't use that clef but we can change it there we go so now we have the short tab clef and what's kind of cool is that um, you know, the, it, it, they provide a uh, sans serif font and a uh, serif font. So we could change from this one to this one, and this will have the serifs. And then we can change from this one to the shorter serif font. And we can get a different type of tab clef with serifs. So you have a couple different options with your tab clefs now uh, with the Smeeful fonts. Now, there's one other thing I want to talk about. I didn't really discover this until recently when I was exploring these uh, Smeeful clefts. In the cleft designer, I'm going to show you something here. There's something interesting going on related to the key signatures and the order of the accidentals. So depending on which clef you choose, let me just go out in here so you can kind of see this. I'm just going to go and select my... Uh, my soprano part here and so this is obviously treble clef I know my uh, meta tools here so one is a soprano clef or the G clef two is my alto clef three is my tenor clef four is my bass clef etc uh, the percussion clefs will will use the accidentals in the same position as the treble clefs uh, so that's why if you are showing accidentals in a percussion clef for some reason that's why it will look like it's in treble clef uh, there's another treble clef with an octave and there's the uh, bass clef with the octave. The next one is this funky F clef where the F is on the middle line and you'll see something interesting. The orientation of the accidentals change. So you can see up here that the B is down on the second line and then the E is above it, A, and it goes in that order. But you can see that they flip the B here. They flip the orientation. So this happens with this particular clef. Uh, this particular clef goes back to normal. Uh, I guess this is the so old soprano clef. And then uh, starting on the second row of those clefs, which is this one, A, B, C, D, E through H, uh, through I, um, A is this movable clef. And again, you get that different orientation of accidentals. B, same thing. C, same thing. All of these movable C clefs. And then we go back to D. Again, this is a percussion clef, so it goes back to normal. D, E, F, G, these are all normal. And the tab clefs will also behave uh, if there are accidentals like the treble clef. So there's some interesting things going on with the orientation of these accidentals. And so what it is is basically uh, number eight, A, B, and C, these four clefts with the flats will flip the orientation. I'm going to get to why this is important in a second. Um, if I go into my key signature and change this to seven sharps, uh, you'll see something else is that the orientation here changes as well for this particular funny clef. And again, let's go through these again. So we have treble clef, and this is the standard orientation of the accidentals. Alto clef retains that, but the tenor clef actually switches the orientation so that the last three uh, keep going upwards, and the first accidental is below the second accidental, which is reversed from the normal uh, situation. So in this case, with sharps, the tenor clef is actually different as well. 
Base clef is normal. Again, we go back to the treble clef orientations, base clef orientations, and again, this one is different. So this is that funky F clef. Uh, this one is will be the same. And then we get into that second row so with these movable clefs, and again, the orientation is different. A, B, C, these different uh, movable clefs. And then it goes back to normal, F, G, H, I, right? So with the sharps, it's the third one, it's the uh, eighth one here, and the first three where the orientation of the sharps gets turned around. Now, all this is to say is that the orientation of the accidentals in the key signatures are baked into the clef designer in a way that you can't easily change it. So, the, in other words, the orientation is pinned to clef number three in this case, or clef number eight, or clef number 10, 11, and 12, right? And it doesn't matter what clef you add here, you could move this clef all over the place by changing the clef position, changing the middle C position, it doesn't matter. That orientation of accidentals will always be the same regardless of what clef you're using here. The other interesting thing is that the accidentals are relative to middle C. So when you start changing the middle C position drastically for these clefts, you're gonna end up with a problem. So let's say, for example, I take this very first one and choose the octave transposing clef, right? And in order to make this work, I can't have the middle C position at negative 10 from the top line. I have to have it at negative three. Uh, and you'll notice that will actually match the, the uh, original one here, negative three, negative six. Now it says negative three, negative six. But again, the position of the accidentals are pinned to this clef number one versus number six. So watch what happens. You get this treble clef with these accidentals all the way up here. Because again, this F sharp is saying it's an octave and a fourth above middle C. But now middle C is the fourth, uh, is a third space here. So it's an octave and a fourth above. So you're getting some weird situations. So all of this is to say that when you are uh, designing your clefts, you do have to be really careful about making sure that the accidentals, um, that the clefts are basically using a position that's very close to the original position of the clef you're replacing, if that makes sense. In other words, it would be okay, for example, to change this to like negative eight, negative four, you know, you'll get a, a decent result. Uh, actually, you won't even, because that's even too weird. So you might have to do, well, let's say negative 12, negative eight, right? Negative eight, there we go. This will look kind of okay. Um, so you just have to be careful about the, the orientation here. Let's go back to that, negative six. And again, all this is to say is that you, you just have to, if you're replacing these clefts with other clefts, you just have to choose one that's very close to where uh, the existing clef is. The final thing I'm gonna talk about, and now this is just a really, uh, just kind of a, a bad thing that they did um, with the smoothful fonts and clefts. So if you make a change, I just changed my F clefts to use the old uh, French F clef there. If you go back into this clef designer and choose that F clef and you want to reset this, first of all, in order to reset this, I find this odd, you have to make a change and then make it back or make a change. There we go. So that you get your reset buttons here. And when you press reset, something bad happens. You'll get a question mark here. This is an oversight when they programmed version 27 with the Smoothful fonts. I believe that when you press the reset and the reset all button, you're basically uh, redirecting the character to find the base clef in the non smoothful font. But however, the, the, the fonts being used here are the Smoothful versions, so these exist in different slots. So this is an oversight uh, that they will probably need to fix at some point. The reset button should bring you back to the uh, Smoothful version of the base clef if you're in a Smoothful file, but alas, it doesn't. So if you ever end up doing this, you're going to have to go back in here, find your clefs, and then find your uh, base clef uh, to get that back to normal. So. That's a, a, a big boo-boo, I think, and um, hopefully I, I, I will try to report that and see if they can uh, uh, rectify that in the next uh, update. 
All right, so there you go. Um, that's what you get with the Smeeful fonts. I mean, there are some really nifty things here. I think just having access to this one is really cool because I know a lot of people are going to want to use this instead of the octave transposing treble clef. I mean, you know, clefs are one of those things. It's it's pretty standardized these days, so there's not a lot of use for a lot of these extra types of clefs. But, you know, it's nice that we have all of these options now. So uh, we just expanded our clef palette a little bit with the Smeeful fonts. All right, so that's it for now. Uh, this is Corraling Clefts, the Smeeful update. And um, yeah, I'm gonna start doing some more uh, videos about other uh, Smeeful updates to other tools, which I think will be helpful for you. All right, so once again, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you soon on the next video.